Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 10th episode of Urasekai Picnic. And last episode, we actually met a new character, Ichikawa, Akari's girlfriend, and she clearly had something weird going on involving like old lady teeth, monkeys, just a very odd situation just in general, but we managed to get it all resolved, it's, it's all good. And we kind of had a bit of a revelation at the end of the episode about uh, sort of kind of looking like uh, Satsuki, that... I, well, I imagine we'll get more into that in this episode, you know, really what that means and kind of the extent of where we're going with that. So let's let's dive on in and see how that is. Three, two, one, play. Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is the bathroom. Are we here to take a bath? Or just to wash our hands? Maybe both? I see we're focusing on the glasses because that's much easier to animate. <laughs> Gonna look in the mirror and see the face that may or may not look like Satsuki. Probably less blurry with the glasses on. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Confirm glasses do in fact make you look like you have sh shorter hair. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Like if you put on glasses, it can like show how you look with a different hair length or different eye color or something. Like wouldn't glasses like that be pretty cool? I know that's not what they were going for, but the idea popped in my head, so... <laughs> What's your problem with that K Kadi? She's cool. She's part of the show now. She's got to be involved. Yeah, we see. We know what the two is in the opening now. I mean, there's a lot of shots in the opening that we have more context for now. <laughs> yeah, you can never see Chikawa back there. Hmm. Back into it. Wow, she's cute. <laughs> Who is she? Can she be the main character for an episode? Right. <laughs> I hope you're right. Okay. Anything you want to talk about? This awkward silence. Can we end it? Makes sense. Well, why wouldn't she? I mean, he has nothing against her making new friends. <laughs> Maybe she thought you didn't like her. <laughs> there you go. Like, she's not super friendly to Akari or anything.
I mean, they didn't leave us a lot of choice. Okay. Ringtone. That's what I thought. What's going on? Is this going to be supernatural stuff? <laughs> uh, that does sound concerning. You're really starting to worry me. I mean, there's one building we know about that has a bunch of floors that are really dangerous. Oh, that's not the one she's talking about. Yeah. Trying to really, really worry me. I like Akari. I don't want her to. Oh no! That no, 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 no. Please, please don't. I, I am extremely worried now. Okay, I guess we just have another one. Right. I, I guess it can. That's why I thought it was the same building, but apparently not. There's still a lot we don't know, I'm sure. Can we go check on Akari, please? <laughs> Not where I live, but yeah, other places. And we really need to go check on her. I'm glad you're aware of that. I wasn't sensing too much urgency here, but... Oh, well now she shows up. Nice to see you, Kozakura. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> where we're going, you probably didn't want to. You probably did not want to get on the elevator. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, she's probably poor, poor, poor Kozakura. Uh, she rushed to get onto an elevator, going to the other side. Pretty funny. <laughs> Surely does look like Kurisu in some angles. <laughs> For protection? Is that the one where, yeah, the girl pops up? Because I still have trauma in regards to that. <laughs> I 
It really is scary. Like, it really, really is. I dread coming to this floor. Uh, that is quite an interesting hallway. Slash room. I mean, we found Akari. I mean... I know, that's kind of what I was thinking about, like... But we can't just abandon Akari. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think she wants to be alone. About halfway through. Who's a granted to enter a video game dungeon? <laughs> yeah, that was a weird place. <laughs> I know, right? Ninja Cats always ruins a good afternoon. <laughs> We're a bit more used to it than you are. We have each other. <laughs> that's cute. Please do it. <laughs> You're the one that's being a big baby. <laughs> You should probably hold hands for safety. Especially since Kozakwa does here. <laughs> Does anyone would love to be a, be a woman magnet? <laughs> I'll go, okay then. Glad we clarified. <laughs> I s well. Akari is our friend now, so. Did we go in a circle or? No, we found something. Oh yeah, this... I thought it was a bed for a second, but... No, it's just like a room... A very out-of-place room in the hallway. Oh, uh... She was there a second ago. Um... Did she go through the mirror? Is she invisible? Are we seeing things? Should Sordo break out the special eye? Get a good look at things? Because I'm kind of trying to prepare myself for a jump scare now. I was, I was expecting a nod. That was supposed to be a nod there. Oh, there's a nod. Okay. Let's take a good look at this. I mean, Mirror might show something scary behind them. Or just break. Or just break. Way to make the field girls feel ugly. Okay, I guess she's over there now. Don't step on any of that. That almost, almost made me jump. It got close. Uh... Ooh. Why does it look familiar? Big pile of static ATVs. It's oddly familiar. Made me jump a little bit. This is somebody's room? Or a salon?
Can we go home now? This is the scariest room so far. Uh, yeah, I guess we can go home because we haven't got her yet. Uh, but why is she ignoring us? Is it even her? Okay, so it seems to be her. Dude, well, because we're chasing after you, despite what you think. We weren't, though. That's That was a misunderstanding from the, first, from the beginning. Someone's just trying to lead you in here. Satsuki? Yeah, it was, did that did not strike you as suspicious? Maybe you're the one that needs glasses? Oh, steps. Maybe we should go home now. We found Akari. There's no reason to stay here any longer. Let's go. Are you... taking a good look at it? Yeah, we should definitely leave then. That just reaffirms my position. Let's go. Might not be viable. It's getting closer. It's like a literal just smoke. Yeah, not on smoke. Does anyone have a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> Probably not very reassuring, I guess. <sighs> well, you're the one that ran to the elevator. Not our, not our fault. Uh, she really is flying behind. That's. I really don't want to abandon her, though. I like her, too. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're closer than I thought. Yeah, you need to open quickly, elevator. Is there, like, an emergency button or something? I mean, I've only read it, rode an elevator a couple times in my life, but I'm not too familiar with them, but... It's got to be a way to make it go faster. Shut, 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 that, shut. Okay, apparently guns are somewhat effective. At least to slow it down. Good thing. <sighs> Well, mission accomplished. <gasps> no. Okay, that actually did make me jump pretty bad. Uh, it was after I breathed a sigh of relief and everything. Well, I think we're safe this time. Uh, please, so what? Uh, that's, does that Satsuki or he's got the long hair? Yeah, where is she even at? It looks like a lava -y kind of place. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, that apparently. Yeah, what exactly just happened? Are they trying to imply that was all a dream or? I'm getting deja vu. Really is a weird place. 
I hope so. I've had enough surprises for one day. Let's just go home. Oh, the Japanese barbecue. Hey, we made it. It's a little detour, but hey, we got here. Nice little family over there. <sighs> yeah, that was way too close for comfort. <laughs> it's gonna be harder and harder to get her to leave the house. Yeah, I'm sure we worked up an appetite. Definitely understandable. <laughs> uh, I figured. Ah, uh, the glove. So maybe it wasn't a dream. So what did she do? Just like... Because look at she teared it off like wallpaper. I don't quite understand the mechanics of that, how that works. Although I guess I'm not supposed to. Why not? You have a cool name. <laughs> the most reliable of the group. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would not be brave enough to do that. It's only it's only the obvious thing to do for anime characters. I mean, she was about to sacrifice herself. <laughs> Let's go eat. I think we burned it. <laughs> that was a very interesting translation. Because not toka means agreement. Sort of. Uh, and of course, Dekinai means can't do something. Uh. Yeah, consent, uh, agreement, yeah. I want to double check that real quick before I spread wrong information. Basically saying she can't agree with what she said. It was a weird translation is my only point. Ah. Changing myself, changing myself. I will change myself, change myself. Will you change yourself by growing out your hair, though? That's the question. Okay. Don't want to look too much like Satsuki. <laughs> that's just how she is you know okay well that was the 10th episode of Uda Sekai Picnic I'm actually not sure how much I have to really say about this episode we did bring up the whole military soldier thing which surprised me a little bit because I we were you know done with that but there seemed to be some desire to help them out despite how things ended off for us which I guess kind of makes sense I mean there's still people in a bad situation you know can't just abandon them I, I I guess I mean I could I guess they can't so that's the thing that was brought up we didn't really make any progress on that end but it was you know brought up as a potential thing to get back into later this episode itself was kind of Operation Rescue Akari she kind of got sucked into the Urasekai like that phone call really just freaked me out like it got chills and everything just because we hear her, you know, obviously she's somewhere we can't really get to her immediately. And she's talking about the ele elevator Urasekai transportation mechanic thing, you know. 
She's talking about that from her perspective. We can't see anything. We're just only going by what she says. And she just keeps describing these things, kind of just progressively building up more and more concern in me. Kind of peeking when she says she sees them waving at her. But she obviously doesn't, because we see them right here. So we know immediately whoever she's looking at is not them, and probably someone that's now does not have positive intentions. So yeah, I was pretty, pretty, I was almost like convinced she was just going to straight up die there. Like that, it had me that level of worried, really. So I was really, I was kind of surprised they were, there was not a bit more urgency on their end, you know? I felt like I was more worried than they were, honestly. So the good thing we were able to rescue her in the end. And Kozakura decided to join us too. Not completely by choice. That was quite funny though. She rushes into the elevator real quick, you know? And then not too long after that, she realizes, oh, I just kind of invited myself on their next Urasekai mission, right? Well, I guess it wasn't really Urasekai. It was more like the in-between that kind of was brought up as a thing in this episode, right? So... Yeah, that was what we were doing in this episode, saving them. And we saw very odd visuals, you know, TVs and stuff. That were all staticky and hallways and mirrors that just break in a salon. Like, yeah, what's with the salon? Like, I have to feel like there's some meaning behind that. I mean, here was a bit of a theme with the fact that Sasuke has long hair. Uh, Sodoro doesn't, and that's a big difference between them. Two characters that otherwise look pretty similar to each other. So is that the extent of the meaning? Like, you know, if sort of if uh, Sasuke cut her hair like she could in this room, she would look more like more like Sodoro. Is that the extent of the meaning behind it? Otherwise, it went over my head. That's as far as I can go with that. Because we also saw pictures of random people with their eyes blocked out, like a sensor bar kind of thing, but with tape. I don't know what I don't. I can't even speculate what the meaning behind that is. I, I don't. I don't gotta guess. But I assume there is. Luckily, Akari wasn't like brainwashed or anything, because I thought she might be with kind of the way she was walking and stuff. But as soon as we talked to her, she responded normally. So at that at that moment, a lot of relief happened with me. But also, we saw something very scary over there that, you know, the way Soro is speaking makes me think of some kind of, like, final boss tier level threat. Like, just something we can only run away from. And we barely got away from it. Like, we barely closed the doors on it, the doors on it and it still came through again, you know, scaring me quite a bit. But luckily, we eventually fully got away. And then we got what was one of the most interesting visuals of the episode, for sure. Uh, right around here. Right? Because everyone's unconscious in the elevator, except for Soro, right? Because she wakes up first. And the elevator door opens on just this fiery, like it looks like some kind of volcanic area, like a lava level, level of a video game, with a girl there with long, beautiful hair and a dress. Like, obviously, kind of a vague visual we have, but you can kind of assume it's Satsuki, right? But, I mean, Soro says as much. But still, I don't know what really we could gain from that meaning-wise. Like, I mean, there's still so much we don't know about Sasuke and what happened to her, right? But she's apparently there. Right? So, continuing to see her. And then she, yeah, she grabs, grabs uh, Toriko's hand to pull pull it off like wallpaper, like a poster, and then just enveloped in whiteness, and that somehow got us out of there. I don't understand how that works. I, I really don't. Like, I don't know. I, don't, I should, really shouldn't try to think too hard on it, really. She uses her hand to get the, to get them back to where they should be. That's all that really matters, probably. And then they woke up again for real this time, or for the second time. I mean, they never woke up, so for them it was only one, one wake-up session. For Soro, it was two. But in the end, we did make it to the, the barbecue place, so that's, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, quite the adventure we had, really. I don't know how much we really advanced the plot in this episode. I don't think we did too much, really. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk about Akari early in the episode. Like, I do think there's some jealousy there in that regard. I mean, Soros, no, 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 his, 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 uh, jealous, jealousy is nothing new to Tora, to Soro. That's what I was trying to say. So I think there's a little bit of that there. But, you know, nothing too bad there in that regard. Akari's, you know, she's one of our friends now. She's going to be part of our group, you know, just, Soro's just kind of got to get used to that, I guess. It's really what it comes down to. But, 
yeah, that was the episode. There's really not that many episodes left, so I wonder how we're going to end up ending this show off, because there's, of course, still so much we don't know about what happened with Satsuki. But, yeah, I guess we'll see when it, when it comes. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snoki and Ryan for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.